Well, welcome everyone to the ceremony that will unite Alan and Heather in marriage. We gather today to celebrate their union and to honor their commitment as today they proclaim their love to the world and we rejoice with them. So who gives this woman away to be married to this man? Her father and mother. Great. Go ahead and release her and give her a hug and a kiss. <laughs> so come on up here, Al. You can come on in right here. Perfect. So in marriage, we give ourselves freely and generously into the hands of the other. And in doing so, each of us receives the love and trust of the other as our most precious gift. But even as that gift is shared by two people who are in love, it also touches the friends and family members who in various ways support and contribute to the relationship. And all of you are Alan and Heather's community. And each of you have played some part in bringing them to this moment, whether it be parent, friend, or relative. This is why gathering as a community is such an important part of a wedding ceremony. Because bride and groom are now taking a new form as a married couple. And in this form, they become a part of our community in a new and beautiful way. So you guys may be seated. So, Alan and Heather, today marks a new beginning for you both. Your wedding only lasts today, but your marriage will last the rest of your life. And so today's about celebrating the two of you and your love and your future life together. And I'll just say this, my wife and I, Melissa, have been married for 24 years. And to be honest, I'm sure others here that have been married for a long time would agree. Um, having a great marriage is one of the hardest things I've ever done. Then we had kids and then that was really hard. But yet at the same time, being married has been the most incredible experience of my life and my wife's as well. And I can honestly say I'm more in love with Melissa today than I was the day we got married. Now I say that because that is the beauty of love. When it's nurtured and pursued between two people, it can truly grow in breadth and depth for a lifetime. Now I do have to say this is the first time I've ever done a wedding with a bunch of dudes in kilts. So well done. It's a first for me. It's a little drafty, I would say. But um, we're proud of you. We think that's great. But I would like to share with you guys a historic passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians 13. That's one of the boldest and I believe most complete definitions of love in the Bible. It's 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Many of us have heard it at many weddings. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And this is where we're going to focus today. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And I want to take a couple of minutes to just camp out on the last part of that verse. Love always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. For your marriage to thrive for the rest of your life, there are four areas you're going to have to fight for. You're going to have to work towards. Love is a verb. It requires action. It isn't this thing that just happens. It takes work. It takes effort. If you want to foster and grow the kind of love that will last a lifetime, that will be growing until the day you take your last breath. It is possible. And so the kind of love you need to fight for is, first of all, a love that protects. Love always protects. And Alan, what that means is that means that you protect Heather and her honor at all costs. You hold her as your primary human relationship, even in the midst of the New England Patriots football season. <laughs> you will need to work hard to keep yourself and your marriage pure. And Heather, this means that you will protect your home and your relationship with Alan. And together, you guys make it a priority to give the time that love requires to grow for a lifetime. This means you take on the world as a married couple, back to back, always having each other's back, fighting for God's best for you because love always protects. Love always trusts. Love does not accuse or think the worst. It always trusts. It always believes the best about the other. Love, love that always trusts demands full disclosure at all times, no secrets. Love does not deliver accusations. 
And while love always trusts the other, that's only half the equation. Love is always trustworthy as well. That means you live lives of complete honesty with each other, even sharing difficult truth in love. And in that, love will foster a deep trust between the two of you, which is paramount to going the distance because love always trusts and is trustworthy. Love always hopes. Now, Alan, I know there already has been maybe a half a day or a full day, maybe a full day that Heather has gotten a little under your skin and you weren't feeling love towards her, maybe, a, maybe three quarters of a day. Now, Heather, I know there's been a lot of days <laughs> where Alan has gotten under your skin and you weren't feeling love towards him. Well, here's where love comes in. Even when the other is totally annoying you and getting on your nerves, love always hopes for a better tomorrow. It always knows that tomorrow's going to be a better day. Why? Because love is at the center of your relationship. Love has an optimism about it that hopes for a great future together, even when the present doesn't seem so promising. That's what love always does. And finally, love always perseveres. True love, the kind of love that you two are longing for and dreaming for and, and want to have, means that no matter what obstacle comes your way, that love perseveres over and above the obstacles. It's steady. It doesn't waver through thick and through thin. And there will be times when you guys encounter even tougher circumstances than you've already encountered in your lives. Life throws a lot at us as we grow old together. A love that perseveres is a love that takes a lot of work. And you guys will have to fight to have that love that always perseveres through thick and through thin. But I will tell you this, we all long to have a love in our soul that always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. But here's the reality. On your own, as human beings, you are not capable of loving like that. Always. See, that little word always is where we fail. In fact, the whole passage that we read about love, humanly, is impossible to pull off because we're not capable of loving that way without help. And this is where God comes into the picture. The only chance that the two of you have of capturing a love that always hopes, always protects, always perseveres is with the help of the creator of love. Through a relationship with Jesus, you can actually draw on his strength to have the kind of love that always, a power greater than yourself, that always will allow you to help to do the impossible to help you love with a love that always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. And as you deepen your relationship with God through Jesus, the impossible then becomes possible. So at this time, we get the privilege of hearing Alan and Heather exchange vows to each other. And we'll start with Alan. And so Alan, I'd like for you to repeat after we go ahead and face each other. You're going to give her the vows, not me. I don't want them. I'm sorry. I, Alan, take you, Heather. I, Alan, take you, Heather, to be my wedded wife, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, till death do us part, till death do us part, and to you I pledge, and to you I pledge, my faithfulness, my faithfulness. Okay, Heather, I'm going to have you hand your bouquet behind you. And you guys can go ahead and grab hands here. And Heather, you can repeat after me. I, Heather, take you, Alan. I, Heather, take you, Alan. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And to you I pledge. And to you I pledge. My faithfulness. My faithfulness. Now these vows are symbolized by a couple of rings. Connor, this is your moment. Oh boy, get them off of there, buddy. You can do it. <laughs> All right, go ahead and take those two. And I'm going to hold on to this. Now this wedding ring is a symbol of eternity. It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond which unites two hearts in endless love. And just as this ring never ends, it symbolizes the love of God for the two of you. 
It will never end. He will always love you. And it symbolizes the never-ending love that the two of you will always share for the rest of your lives. And now, um, Alan, as a token of your love and of your desire to be forever united in heart and soul, you can place the ring on Heather's finger. And then repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. In token and pledge. In token and in pledge. Of my constant faith and abiding love. My constant faith and abiding love. With all my love and affection. With all my love and affection. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. And Alan, as you place the ring on Heather's finger, do you promise God you will keep the vows that you have made here today? I do. Great. Go ahead and place the ring on his finger. And now as a token of your love and your deep desire to be forever united in heart and soul, repeat after me, Heather. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. In token and pledge. In token and in pledge. Of my constant faith and abiding love. Of my constant faith. Constant faith and, and abiding, abiding love. love. <laughs> With all my love and affection. With all my love and affection. I give my life to you. I give my life to you. So Heather, as you place this ring on Alan's finger, do you promise to God to keep the vows that you have made here today? I do. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, for the opportunity to join Alan and Heather as they make vows and exchange rings before you and pledge their lives to one another. Lord, I pray that you would bless this marriage. I pray that every day, no matter how difficult, would have a, a sliver of joy and that the highs would be high and that they would celebrate each other on a daily basis and the gift that you've given them in each other. Lord, this is a marriage, a match made in heaven by your choice that they come together. And so God, I just pray that from here on out, this would be a beautiful, romantic, wonderful marriage that celebrates not only each other, but celebrates you as well. In your holy name, amen. You guys can both face outward. Alan and Heather, you have given yourselves to each other by solemn vows with the joining of hands and the giving of rings in the presence of God and these friends. I now pronounce you husband and wife, whom God has joined together. Let no man dare to separate. Alan, you may kiss your bride. And I am proud to present to you for the first time, Alan and Heather Wilson. I can go ahead and head on out, right down the middle there.